But you guys got another video. So you're looking to buy a refurbished PC and this video is going to help you decide whether a refurbished PC is for you because a lot of people promote this stuff on YouTube, but they seem to skip over a lot of the essential information that you need to know before you start dropping your hard earned cash on one of these old office PCs. So this is a Dell Optiplex 3060 MT. You can use this method for any version of Office PC, whether it's via Dell, HP, or Lenovo. So this one is what we're looking at right now. You can see 199 pounds. Straight away, when you look at the back, you should do your investigation and you will see a very slim line power supply. Very low wattage on these, probably around about 180 watts. And it's proprietary, which means you will not be able to replace this with a standard power supply. You will need to find another power supply to replace it with, unless you want to modify the actual case to replace it with. So you would have to get a Dremel out and cut this out to be able to put in a standard power supply if it fits in there. Another thing to look out for is poor airflow on these particular office PCs. People forget to talk about the lack of airflow inside. This is inside that Dell Optiplex 3060 MT. As you can see, little to no ventilation in the front. So no fan drawing air in. You can see that little power supply there, thin and long, very low power on this one. And it has a tiny 80 mil fan exhaust on the back. You can see only two RAM slots on here. Uh, it can get a graphics card in here, but it's going to be limited because of the way of the chassis closes. It's going to restrict the length of card that you're going to have to put in here. Also, there is no power cable for the power supply for the graphics card. So people recommend you use the SATA to PCI Express adapter cables to be able to draw power from the power supply for the graphics card. But it just simply isn't enough power uh, to do that and it will be a fire hazard if you do that method or you'll just get constant crashing of the computer because there's just not enough power to be delivered to the graphics card either way it could end up blowing and taking all your components with it so that method is not good enough either now there is also proprietary parts in here for the power supply you would need adapter cables for that and you can see them on the screen right now. Another problem you're going to run into is once you start putting the graphics card in there, the heat is going to build up and there's just no airflow. There's no intake or exhaust fans that are good enough to get rid of the heat that's going to build up inside that case. So you may be saying to yourself, well, hold on a second. I can just remove the motherboard from the case and put that into a nice modern case with some RGB. So let's take a look at the motherboard. And as you guessed it, it's a proprietary motherboard. Right here, you'll see this on a lot of these proprietary systems from Dell, HP, and Lenovo. They will basically have their own custom board. The standoff positions on this are not the same as a standard Micro ATX motherboard. So they are not going to fit into a standard case. You can get a couple of screw fixings on them, sometimes two or three, but you're not going to be able to do all of them to hold it in place, which will make it a bit flexible. Again, you can see that front control uh, header there that is still attached to the motherboard. You can't do anything about that. And again, there is limited SATA ports on the board as well. And you've got that proprietary connectors right there. Some of them, uh, you have to have sensors on there. There's all different types of proprietary stuff you have to jump through to get it to work in another case. Now, some systems can be transferred to another case quite easily, and uh, that's not as difficult as some of them are. Uh, some of them have sensors on them. You have to transfer that with it as well, and a bunch of other pin layouts are all different. Also, you may look at uh, there that there's very few SATA ports on here as well. So all in all, you're, you're going to run into some issues here uh, with the way this works if you want to remove the motherboard and put it into another case. Not all of them are going to be this difficult. Some of them are even more difficult than others, depending on what type of model you go for. So bear that in mind before you start buying these uh, and putting them into a, another case, because it's not that simple. Uh, some of the fan 
uh, layouts on here are very minimal. Uh, they have only have uh, one fan header, some of them, which isn't enough. No RGB on them. Also, the power supply here. You can upgrade the power supply on these, believe it or not, by using one of these 500 watt power supplies, but they're not cheap. And again, but this does have a PCI Express cable on it, which means you can use it to power a graphics card. So you might want to keep that inside that case and use a power supply like this uh, rather than using uh, one of the other ones and, you know, cannibalizing the case to try and get it in there. So you can use something like this or find one that does fit uh, rather than, uh, you know, case swap it or things like that. Another thing to look into is obviously the grading. Sometimes these cases are graded from A, B, C or D, depending on the quality of the actual unit itself. The lower down the pecking order, i.e. Uh, C and D, might mean it's got dents and scratches and dings, whereas A might be really mint condition. And if you're looking to keep it in the case, then you may want to find one that is grade A and try to uh, stick with something like that if you're going to have it in your home. If not, and you're looking to do, uh, you know, some sort of transformation of it into another case or you don't care what it looks like, then by all means go for a lower grade. They're probably cheaper. But even with 500 watt uh, power supply, if you swap it out, you're going to be limited because the power supply in there is very limited. It's like 170 watts, 180 watts, and it's not going to be enough uh, to do what you need it to do properly. So if you're looking to buy one of these and you see the word refurbished, uh, that just means reconditioned or pre-owned or used. It basically means it's had a wipe down and a fresh install of windows and stuck up on eBay for sale. So let's talk about small form factors. These are the systems right here. People buy these because they're cheap, but you're limited even more with these because of the space inside. So you would have to have a low profile card. Again, they don't come with a PCI Express uh, cable on them to power a graphics card. So you'd have to buy something else that is capable of running on low power because the power supply on these are pretty low. Another thing to look out for is the motherboards on these. If you're looking to do a case swap, they've got some weird shapes to them like this. And again, proprietary connections on here and proprietary uh, uh, layouts for the standoffs. So it's not that simple. You may be looking at something like this where you can purchase these which are modern. If you are looking to buy one, try to get one that's a, an 8th gen or newer. And something like this for £150 might be tempting because it's an i5 9500T uh, and that's got 16 gigabytes of RAM. does have a bit of ventilation on the side here, but you have to bear in mind what you're trying to do with this system. If you're looking to keep it the way it is, let's take a look inside here. When you start putting a graphics card in there, it's going to be so close to the actual power supply. It's going to be right on top of it and it's not going to be able to breathe. So that's one big problem with this particular type of case. People don't think about that when they're buying these and they see channels putting a graphics card in and playing games on it. But you've got to think of longevity. There is no airflow in the front there. Very little airflow coming in from the front. You might be able to get a small 80 mil fan in there if you're lucky, but that power supply is certainly going to not be powerful enough to work correctly with that power supply. You're going to have to look at replacing it with another power supply. And again, like I said before, you're very limited with this sort of stuff. A lot of people don't mention it in videos. They just see some benchmarks or gaming, but it's very short lived. It's not actually... Uh, explaining some of the pitfalls of owning one of these. Another one is Windows 10 is running out in October 2025 next year. And if you've bought one that's less than an eighth generation Intel, it's not going to work uh, on Windows 10. And that is a big problem. So you need to look at if you want to upgrade and you want to use this for the future, then try to get one that's an eighth generation or newer. And you should be able to use that. Uh, in the future another major problem i see with a lot of these systems are they don't have a lot of ram in them sometimes only four gigs or eight gigabytes of ram they don't come with an ssd and they don't have a low-end cpu in them like an i3 or something like that uh, so if you're looking to buy one of these cheap and it has those specifications on it the time you upgrade the cpu to something a bit more juicy like an i5 or an i7 
and time you add more RAM in there and time you change the power supply and you then you add an NVMe in there or, or an SSD in there to, good enough to put all your games and stuff on, that's going to start totting up on top of the price that you paid for the unit itself. And then you have to sort of weigh it up against what it would cost to buy a new cheaper system, which is modern and runs Windows 11 and it does all that stuff. You might have to spend a bit more money, but it's going to be cheaper in the long run. And again, if you're looking at swapping it out for another case, you've guessed it. It's got that horrendous motherboard on here. And there's tons of them with this particular motherboard layout. Very few SATA ports on here. Just two sticks of RAM that will go in here. It's a very basic board. As you can see, one fan header right at the very top. No other fan headers on here. So you're going to need to get a fan controller and a hub. And if you want RGB, you're going to have to get an RGB hub. It's not going to run uh, the way it would do with addressable RGB. Oh, there is another fan header there. I can see it. So you've got two fan headers, one for the CPU cooler and one for all your other fans. But look where it's situated, right in the middle of the board, which means you're going to have cables going right up over the board. And this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to deter you from uh, swapping it out and uh, using this uh, in another system. Now, of course, you could get yourself another motherboard and take all the parts out like RAM, and chip and things like that but again that's going to be costly and it's probably not going to be worth doing it so if you are going to use it you're going to have to use this motherboard and unfortunately you've got that hideous front on there which is going to be part of the uh, case inside so if you're buying cheap gaming systems on ebay look out they will never show you inside because they're sometimes using old boards like these where they've taken them out and putting them into another case and uh, basically got the RGB working and try to fool people into a gaming system. Again, lag, latency, uh, you know, you're going to end up with micro stutters and things like that on some of the older ones because obviously they wasn't made for PC gaming. But other than that, if you are looking to get one, uh, just watch out for those particular things and you should be okay if you are on a super tight budget. But just be careful with what you're buying and make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. And there is literally tons of YouTube channels that are promoting old systems like these, and they're not actually telling you and explaining to you the pitfalls that you can run into and some of the hurdles that you have to jump over and the hoops you have to jump through to try to get these to work on other cases and things like that. They're not explaining it all. They just show you the end product. Again, power supplies on these are very low power. 180 watts maximum on this particular model and it's not going to be enough to run any decent graphics card and that's why it doesn't have a PCI Express cable on it and that's why people use that janky cable like a SATA 2 PCI Express which is not cool and it is dangerous and you shouldn't be using it on a PC like that. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope these tips and tricks help you out if you're looking to buy one of these cheap uh, office PCs. If you are, then uh, follow those guidelines and you should be okay and you should know what you're getting yourself into if you're spending. Do not spend a lot of money on these things. They are not worth it. Uh, they come with major headaches. And uh, if you're looking for something cheap and you just surf the web and watch YouTube and uh, do some emails and things like that, then you can buy one of the older systems and do that. And once the timers run out, for Windows on it, you can install uh, Linux Mint or one of the other flavors of Linux out there for those old systems, and it'd be perfectly fine. They're really not geared for gaming, really. And if you are looking for a gaming system, maybe look for a, a used gaming system on eBay if you're on a tight budget that has proper components in it that are not proprietary, and you should be uh, better off doing that because it'll have an upgrade path to it, whereas these don't really have an upgrade path to them. If you're looking to buy one, and switch out the chips in them and stuff like that, it's not going to work because they're BIOS locked and you're just going to end up with a big major headache. Anyway, but that said, I'm starting to waffle. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support. Just a quick video for today and I'll catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.